Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our PW service today. You're very, very welcome. Um, we're very excited to be, to be able to do this today. Um, so I welcome you if you're joining us today in the sanctuary, if, you, um, if you're online, or you may be listening to the CD later on in the week. Um, I hope you feel that you are part of this service. Our guest speaker this morning is Eleanor Drysdale, who uh, serves as a deaconess in Wellington Church in Ballymena. Um, her areas of responsibility are pastoral care, women's ministry and prayer. And so Eleanor, just over here, um, you're very welcome. And thank you so much for um, agreeing to come and be with us today. And Mark, I can't see, but Mark um, is back with us this morning. And it is wonderful to have you back with us. Um, you have been missed. 
I want to take this chance just at the start of the service, because if I don't, I'll forget, just to thank everybody um, for the, on the committee this year, um, because it has been a team, and um, everybody has supported everybody and supported me as well. I also thank the congregation, because we had a, a coffee morning and a craft morning back in December, and we were able to raise £1,300 and more for the projects. And you've been given a little flyer um, with your order of service just for the three projects that we are supporting this year. So uh, take time, please, to just read a little bit about them. Um, so Now we're going to be called uh, to worship, and it is Romans 12. Um, verse 2. This has been used as part of uh, the PW uh, theme and praise for, for this year. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. We're now going to sing hymn 452. Um, which is the King of Kings. <laughs> before God in our prayer of adoration and confession, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord, the world outside our window is changing. The snowdrops have given way to daffodils, and all the beauty of nature is eagerly waiting in line to burst forth as spring truly arrives. We give thanks to you for all you give us in this season and every season, both in nature and in our lives. We travel a path guided by you, Transformed each step of the way, you send your word and people to walk with us at every stage, changing our thoughts and actions as we are shown how to live the wonderful life Jesus gave us through his death on the cross and his resurrection. We are truly blessed when we focus our eyes on him. Yet, Lord, you know us all, the real us, with so many distractions and worldly demands. We are children, we fail, we are human. But your love is our firm foundation, a love and support that we know we do not deserve. Your love never stops or turns away, even when we are in our darkest moment. Our confession is the honesty of seeing ourselves and presenting ourselves to you. Allow us to be transformed by your love. Allow us to be forgiven in your eyes. 
from all the seasons of our lives and their transformation, you have been with us. You knew our heights and our depths, yet you respond with arms open wide and a slate wiped clean. Lord, we give this thanks to you this day. We now join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christine will now lead us um, with a reading from Psalm 131. Let us hear the word of God from Psalm 139, a transformative psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is in my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. May God add his blessing to this reading. Amen. Can I ask any of the boys, girls, could you come up to the front? Would you come up? Don't leave me on my own. Come on ahead. Have we got any? Oh, brilliant. Great. We have a few. I'll be gentle, honestly. Great. Thank you. Oh, here we're skipping up now too. Brilliant. Do you just want to sit down? Would that be okay? Yeah? You just want to dance? Great. Um, today's a special day. Does anybody know what today is? Mother's, yeah. day. Mother's day. Okay. Has anybody been up early and made breakfast for mum? <laughs> what? Did any mothers get breakfast made for them? Did you? Great. Who made it? Oh, gold star for you. That's brilliant. I'm sure all the husbands were all up early thinking about what they were going to make for breakfast for their wives, just to encourage them. So yes, it's a special day, but maybe you're doing something later on. Are you doing something later on? Yes? Right, okay. Well, I, I brought some things that, um, that I, I got, would have got from my mum. And... Um, Here's one of the things I got. A nice card. Did you just buy a card? We see this one here. Thank you. It goes. <laughs> and it says on it, Mum, do you know how much I love you? And it says, this much. Okay. Did any of you get a card for your mum? Oh, here I'm beginning to worry about you. Anybody make a card for their mum? Yes, ah, oh, fantastic, great. We might have got a card. Let me see. Uh, did anybody buy? Did anybody get flowers for their mum? No. Here we're on. I don't know. You're going to have to work harder for next year. Eh? We've got to set your eyes. Well, I, I, I get some. I look, mum used to love tulips, so I got those tulips as well. And and of course, you have to get her. 
a bag of sweets that you like. <laughs> Isn't that right? You get her a bag of sweets that you like because you know she'll not want to eat them all and she'll have to share them, won't you? Yeah, okay. So those are some of the things that we can do when we're wanting to celebrate Mother's Day. But my card said I want to show her that I loved her that much. Is there any other ways I could show her that I loved her? Don't go all shy on me here. Because I'm going to have to start asking the choir. And they're getting very nervous. So they are. What other ways could we show her that we love her? No ideas? Doreen. Sorry, I was prompting. Were you, were you prompt out louder? <laughs> Help to do the dishes. What do you think? Could you help to do the dishes today? No? Okay. That, that, Doreen, that one's worse. Helen. Dishwasher. Helen, give us another idea. A hug. Who said hug? You say hug. That's a, that's a brilliant one. You give mummy good hugs. Do you give good hugs? I think you do. I think you do. Yeah. Right, Kim, what are you hoping for in your household? Just a smile. <laughs> hey, lady, she don't expect much down here. <laughs> hey, if this was Balamina, there'd be a war by now. You do realize that. Yeah, Mother's Day is about showing our mums that we love them, that we care about them, and making it a wee bit special for them today. And maybe in showing love, we can do those different things. We can maybe help do the dishes. Maybe give them a hug, a wee kiss even. Or maybe even just, you know what? Doing what they ask us to do today. Hey, that would be a big one for some mums today. If you would do what she asked you to, to, to do. But you know, with God, there's lots of ways that we can show God that we love him too. And one of the ways that you have shown that you love God, believe it or not, is by coming here today. By coming here today with your mum or your dad or whoever brought you. It's an act of showing God that we love about him, we care about him. When we read his word or when we pray, those are ways that we show him that we love and we care about him. And when we pray, we talk to him and we share with him what's on our hearts. And, and so that he knows that we care about him just as he loves us. I'm going to ask you to do something that you've never done before. I bet you end here. I'm going to ask you all to stand, right? All right. Can you stand up too? Yeah. Can you smile? Yes? Right, because I'm going to ask you to do something really frightening. Right? I'm going to ask you to turn around and face that. Now, don't do it yet. Face that way. Okay? And you're going to smile. So you need to practice your smile. They're going to smile back. <laughs> See the way the choir is smiling at you? They're going to smile back too. Okay? And it's only going to be for a wee moment or two. All right? And honestly, it'll be painless. I promise you. All right? So do you want to turn around? And you're, not going to, you're just going to keep your hood down, that's all right. Okay, let me say this to the congregation. These children and, and any others that are out here upstairs or wherever have been given to you by God to care for. Every single one of you, whether you're a leader, whether you're a session, whether you're, whatever aspect you have with life in, within this church, whether these children belong to you or not, God has given them to you to care for. The most precious way that you can care for these children is to pray for them, is to pray over their lives, is to pray that they'll know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, is to pray for them for all the things that they're going on in their lives. The other way that you can really encourage all of these children is if they're not about, if they're missing some of the Sundays here at church, is actually find out if they're okay. Don't leave it up to your minister. Don't leave it up to your session clerk or your deputy session clerk. Don't leave it up to other people. If you have noticed, then you take the action of finding out if they're okay. Do you know what will happen? They will realize how much they're cared for by you as a church. And that will draw them in even more. And I'm going to share later the story of somebody who did just that. An elderly lady who noticed one of the children was missing got his home number, phoned, and what happened as a result of that phone call? They are a gift to you, all of you, from God. Pray for them, please, every day. Pray over their lives. 
do you want to sit down and I'm going to pray with you before um, we do whatever you're going to do next, all right? I said, keep your head doing. I said, leave it alone. All right. Good job. All right. She's all right. She's fine. All right. Let me pray with you. Father, I just want to thank you for each child here this morning. Just for the joy of seeing them here, Lord. Just for the joy of them actually being part of this church family this morning. That you have called them to be part of this church family. And Lord, you have given us a responsibility <clears throat> as people to watch over them. To care for them. To help them to find Jesus. To know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You have called us to do that, Lord. Whether we're in position in this church and youth organization or whether we just come here Sunday by Sunday. So Lord, will you lay these children on our hearts this week to pray for them? Maybe make one child even, Lord, special in our hearts that we'll find out their name and that we'll pray for them, not just today, not just tomorrow, but continually throughout their lives. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the lives of these children that you will shape and mold them to be men and women of God who love you and walk with you all the days of their life. So Lord, will you just lavish them with your love today? And Lord, for those that are mums here in the, in the congregation, Lord, for those that are excited about today, for those that are, are sad about today, wherever they're at today, Lord, will you again, Father, just lavish them with your love and your care that they will know your presence with them. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up and being part. The stay for the show. Um, your song, which is um, We Are Marching. <laughs> to sing the anthem, I am not my own.
As you see from the flyer that was in your order of service, PWA has three, three ongoing projects. The overseas outreach is through Sat7 broadcasts across the Middle East and North Africa, reaching and teaching millions, especially women and girls. The home projects are two. One is a biblical counselling service in the Dublin area of the Adelaide Road Presbyterian Church and a Christian mentoring programme in the Armagh Down Craigavon area for our young people in schools, actually in the Bambridge area. They're all worthy causes and they're included this morning in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Sovereign and caring God, we bring the needs of our broken world to you. Where there is war, famine, and little medical aid, we pray for peace, sharing of resources, 
healing and comfort to all in distress and pain. We thank you for each of the Presbyterian women's projects. Firstly, enabling women and girls to recognize their God-given worth in restricted circumstances abroad. And secondly, the opportunities to reach families through biblical counseling and mentoring young people in our local schools. What a privilege to encourage and support financially and also by our prayers. Equip and enable each volunteer in all these valuable ministries. And as we pray for our congregation, we remember any in hospital, nursing home, and being cared for at home. Strengthen and enfold them in your caring arms. In the silence, we bring our personal prayers to you. All of these we pray according to your will, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next praise uh, prepares us for listening to God's word today, and it's him I heard the voice of Jesus say. Luke 7, 36 to 50. Jesus anointed by a sinful woman who knew a transformed life. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at his table. A woman in that town who lived and a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at this Pharisee's house. So she came with an alabaster jar of perfume. As he stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, 
Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed him, and put perfume on them. When the Pharisee who, saw, who invited him to, to this, uh, invited him, saw this, he said to himself, If this man was a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman that she is, that she's an actual sinner. Jesus answered, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and another 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave them the debts of both. Now, which of them would love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus says. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came to your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet mine with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven loves, loves, sorry, little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say upon themselves, who is this who forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Can I just say a, a personal thanks to all those who have taken part today in the service. Um, I'm, I'm conscious for those of us that do it on a more regular basis, it's a wee bit easier, but for those who do it maybe only once in the year, it's, it is a lot more traumatic nearly. And when you do it in your own church as well. So thank you so much to them. Thank you to your musicians. It's been lovely to hear a trumpet and a clarinet. Uh, and the keyboard, really, really good. So thank you so, so much. And to the choir as well. Let me just at the outset, um, just bring us to prayer before God before we, we uh, look at his word. Father, would you just close us in with yourself? Block out all other distractions that there would be, Lord, that would lead us away from you. And instead, Lord, help us to hear you speak Thank you, Father, that you are here. You promise where two or three are gathered together that you are there in the midst. And so, Lord, we ask that today, that whatever is said, Lord, that there will be words, Father, that you desire your people to hear and to understand and to receive. So we ask, Lord, that there will be open hearts to receive you, Father, today. And I ask, Lord, as your servant, that your Holy Spirit will fill me and speak through me. And allow me only, Lord, to speak what you have given. In Jesus' name, amen. It, I want to just at the start, let's just finish off what I was saying with the children. Um, we were uh, moved from old Wellington Street uh, to new premises back in 2009. And, and not long after we were, were in there, our minister um, was retiring. We were going into a vacancy and a new family had just started to come. They literally came on that Sunday. They had two young boys. And on that Sunday, one of the boys walking down the corridor suddenly just took the hand of one of our senior members. He didn't know her, didn't know anything about her, but he held her hand. And so she introduced herself to him and he introduced himself to her. And so each Sunday he would look for her at church. And then a few Sundays they weren't about. And she thought that this was strange because they had been there every Sunday. So she made it her mission to find out where they lived, what their telephone number was. And she phoned the house and she just said, look, I really missed you being at church, I just wanted to phone and check that everything was okay. And it turned out that the wee boy hadn't been well. That made a massive difference in the life, not just of that wee boy, but of that family. 
Today I can tell you that that wee boy is quite grown now, so he is. His parents head up the special needs work within our church. Their son plays drums. He's part of the sound team. The other son, part of the sound team. And we have watched them grow in faith. And they will tell you it was because somebody took the time to phone and ask, were they okay? Looking out for one another here each Sunday is part of what God wants you to do, to care for one another. I'm so thankful that the members of the Presbyterian Women um, invited me to come today, even though Doreen told me I was second choice, but I'll not hold that against her. Um, right in the middle of General Assembly and amongst my colleagues. So it was, but, uh, but it is a delight to be with you and to share with you this morning. So it is. And I want to thank you for the work of Presbyterian women. And there's a couple of things I want to acknowledge right at the very start of that, that, that some folks here may not be aware of. And, and there's two important things within it all. One is your financial giving. Presbyterian women over the years literally has given millions of pounds that has enabled missionaries to go all over the world for deaconesses to serve here in the Presbyterian Church in Ireland and for other work to be carried out in special projects throughout the whole of Ireland. Without you doing your bit in that, lives would not be changed. So thank you. Thank you when you, you think that just handing in your mission box is a small thing or giving a donation is a small thing or that retiring offering at the end is a small thing. It is not. It is such a valuable piece of all of the work when it's put together that lives will be changed throughout this world because of your giving, which is incredible when we think about it. But I want to say thank you also for how you have faithfully prayed for the work of Presbyterian women. I am one of those who has benefited from your prayers. And I want to share with you a couple of examples of what happens when you pray for somebody who you may not know. I haven't met most of you, um, but I know that you have been praying for me. And I want to share what happens when you do that and the difference that it makes for me, but a difference it makes in other people's lives. I'm going to share with you a text that was received late one Saturday night on my phone. And I went back and looked at it again today. It's dated June 2021. The text reads like this. Taking the tablets and wine. Thank you for being my friend. In that split, split section, that minute of, of, of reading that text, I knew exactly what had happened. This person had taken an overdose of tablets, washed it down with wine, wanting to end their life. I immediately phoned where I thought they might be, spoke to a family member, made them aware of what I'd just received. And I'm very thankful to God that the person was found and that a process began in which they underwent healing from alcoholism. Thank you for your prayers when you have prayed for deaconesses and mission workers and, and all sorts of people that they would have wisdom and to know God's presence. I can tell you that the rest of this, that story is that that same phone that that text came in, um, I had just replaced that day because I broke my phone at lunchtime that day. And I hemmed and hawed about whether I would change the phone or not or whether I would wait a few days or not. And yet that afternoon felt prompted that I needed to go and change it. I'd broken the screen on the phone. It was... It, the colours were running through it. I couldn't see anything on it. And I went that day and bought a new phone. And when I shared with the person who had taken the overdose, when they were actually sober and could understand, I shared with them what had happened with the phone and the very fact that if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have got that message. I wouldn't have been able to make that phone call to their home. And when they went in for treatment for the alcoholism they shared that story with the folks that were treating them. 
And one of the, the women there said to them, God must really want you alive. His hand upon it. Your prayers make a difference. Please never stop praying. Uh, somebody shared with me just coming in through the doors today about Joanne, who's the, the deaconess in, in Antrim Hospital. And towards the end of lockdown, again, I got a phone call to go immediately to Antrim Hospital um, as somebody was about to have their life support machine switched off. I knew it was going to take me a good 20, 25 minutes to get there, so I, I phoned Joanne. And I asked her, Joanne, can you get somebody round with this family immediately? She was actually in Craig Haven Hospital working in there that day, but she made the calls. And by the time I arrived down, a hospital chaplain was already with this family. And I stood in the corridor outside ICU with a father as he said goodbye to his son over the phone. Because of COVID, he wasn't allowed in. Your prayers sustained me that day. Gave me the right words to say in the situation that God had called me into. Your prayers sustained Joanne to have the wisdom to do the work that God has called her to do in Antrim Hospital and to put the right things in place. Your prayers make a difference. Thank you. Thank you and keep praying. Wellington Presbyterian Church moved from the town centre out to the, the new site. We talk about new site, but we're actually in 15 years. We moved out there in 2009. It's one of eight Presbyterian churches in the town. And, and Wellington's made up of approximately 700 families. This morning, in the region of 600 people, will have gathered together for worship at the front will probably be in the region of 40 or 50 children causing havoc, as only children can do. Our statement for Wellington is this. Wellington exists to see people truly know Christ, to understand God's word, and to live for him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And each of our organizations, their program is built around that statement. And, and that statement flows through into my heart for the work that God has called me to do. So the main duties that I have within Wellington is pastoral care, is Bible study, it is a prayer group, and it's our women at Wellington. Um, and I also take one service a month in my own church. Um, I'm also on the chaplain's committee in Church House, and I'm also on um, the Council for Mission in Ireland. So life is quite quiet and mundane, as you might think. But God has been good. Pastoral care allows me to meet with people at their worst moments, but also at their best and everything else in between. My focus is based around that first part of the mission statement, is to help people know Christ, to know that he sees them. In, in the Old Testament is the story of Hagar. And it's a story of a, of a woman who um, has been given to Abraham to, to bear him a child so that his name can go on. And she's been given by Sarah. And when she has borne that child, Sarah, who can't have children, is really jealous and, and sends Hagar away, gets Abraham to send Hagar away. And we have this moment when she runs out of water and she's with her child out in the desert and she's laid her child down on the ground and she goes and sits at a distance because she says, I can't watch him die. And, and, and as she's sitting there, God comes to her and God speaks to her and God shares with her how he is in control of everything that's going on in her life. And Hagar says this about God. You are the God who sees me. Let me share with you this morning that no matter how you feel today, you are seen by God. Even if this morning here in church or at home, you feel as if no one else sees you or cares about you, know this. God sees you. And not only does he see you, 
but he cares about every aspect of your life. You are precious to him. Now, as you can imagine, that size of a congregation and the pastoral work is spread out. Um, there's two of us in full-time uh, ministry, that's the minister and myself, and then two retired ministers who help with the pastoral care. It's a passion of mine to be out amongst people. I love doing that. I love sharing with them. I love having fun with them too. I love just allowing them to engage with God, encouraging them to engage with God. But as important as that also is, then also is Bible study. And, and Bible study has always been an important part of the life of Wellington. We approach it in a number of different ways, from the Wednesday night study led by the minister to life groups, and we have about 20 life groups on the go, to a Thursday morning Bible study group, uh, which I lead of women, and a Friday morning young women's group that's led by another girl. The most precious thing that you have, either in your home or here with you today, is the Word of God. Can I encourage you to do something? And I, I, I know we've got away from this, and, and I know it was lockdown. I know our place, it came during lockdown. But we've got out of the habit of carrying our Bibles. And, and when I first went to Wellington, um, I'm there 20, 20 plus years. What really struck me the night that I walked into Wellington Church was that everybody carried their Bible. And, and when the reading was announced, all you could hear was the flick of paper as people turned to the passage. Now, I know we've got electronic devices and all sorts of things like that. I, I'm a dinosaur. I'm bricks and mortar. Uh, but the encouraging thing is this, is what you read here today, what you hear here today, that you go home and you read that for yourself. You check out what I have said or how your, what your minister has said. You check that against the word of God. What does God say? And it allows you an opportunity to sit on your own with the word and to go back through it to hear what God is saying to you as an individual. Maybe God stirs with your, in your heart something within the service, but you need to go back and you need to search that and seek that out for yourself as well. I implore you, be in the word of God. Whatever translation you find easiest, please be in the word of God. And the other vital element uh, for us as a congregation is prayer. Uh, we have a number of different prayer meetings, whether that's on a Wednesday night. We have an early morning Tuesday morning. We have a uh, lunchtime on a Thursday. We have before the morning and evening services. We have during the service on a Sunday morning. We have a prayer line WhatsApp group, which has over 100 people. We have a small prayer team uh, who will pray with individuals either in the, in the church or at home. Prayer is about connecting with God. Prayer is sharing what's on your heart with God and him sharing what's on his heart with you. If you're a grandmother here today, be encouraged. I stand here as a deaconess because of the prayers of my grandmother. She died back in 1990, well before I became a deaconess. But I know how much she prayed for me in the different areas of my life that she prayed into. And, and for parents, and some of the parents I hope will agree with me, or if you have teenagers about, if you get a grunt, some days you're doing well. If you get two grunt, you think you're on a roll. And yet quite often, teenagers especially, will talk with granny and granda the way they won't talk with their mum and dad. May share with granny and granda the way they won't share with their mum and dad. And you may have the best opportunity to pour into your grandchild's life that will make a difference for all eternity. I want to encourage you, be men and women who pray. Be at your prayer meeting here in the church. Take part in that. And the other major part of my work then at Wellington is within our women's ministry. And in the last few years, we've been trying to, to work at that and change things a bit uh, and try and encourage our younger women to come along. Can I say, one of the big blocks is people have this idea, they think they know what it's about. They think they look at it and they say, that's for the old women. Sorry, for those that you're younger than who are in it. 
can I tell you that in, certainly in Wellington, some of my older women are wilder than my younger women. And some of my older women would be quicker to lead my younger women astray than the other way around. You don't know what you're missing out on by just simply sharing in the lives of other women. Other women who have already walked the journey, whether that's as a parent, whether that's uh, just in life in general, whether that's in the business field, whether that's in, in how to be a good neighbor. These women have a life of experience in all sorts of different areas that they long to share with you. Um, when when uh, we moved into the new church, our eldest member was 104. Um, she was out at church every Sunday. Uh, she cut the ribbon on the first Sunday. I, I got summoned to her house to make sure that everything was in place and to tell me that she had arranged to get her hair done uh, and what time had she to be there at. Uh, we were down at the church. She and the, uh, the the oldest baptism member, if that's the right word for it, uh, were going to cut the ribbon. Uh, and Albert and her sat in a side room and she says, well, son, what age are you? And he says, I'm 80, I think he was 85 at the time. Oh, you're nothing but a pup. Do you know, she loved the Lord. I, I wish now that I had more conversations with her. I, I used to take our younger women to meet with her to say that because of your age, it doesn't stop you doing things. Because of your age, it doesn't stop you walking with the Lord. Because of your age, it doesn't stop you serving the Lord. She loved the Lord with all of her heart. She was a, a real prayer woman. But she was a woman who was full of fun too. And when I took younger women to meet with her, they were amazed and they wanted to be with her. If you've never been to PW, let me encourage you. Give it a go. Give it a go. And you may find, actually, that you'll meet women who will be a real blessing into your lives. Last year, we had Shirley McGonagall with us from IMP, uh, International Meeting Place. And at the end of her talk, we always throw it out to the women, how does this impact on you and how does this impact on the church? And one of the things that uh, Shirley said about was that the need for bicycles for um, all of those who were coming into the country so that they could get to work. And she threw out, we need 200 bicycles, she said. And that was it, end of story. And the women talked and a, a group of the younger women said, could we get together, could we maybe do something about this? And so by the end of that week, we had nine adult bicycles. And I was sharing with the ladies earlier on, I, I asked one of our men to take the bicycles up the IMP, up on the Lisbon Road. And Jim took them up, and he met the guy Henry in charge of it all there. And Jim's life was changed in that one meeting. As of a week ago, Jim has collected 119 bicycles. And he's still searching houses for more. So if you have any bicycles that you're not using or that you got for Christmas or a few Christmases ago that you're not using, they will be glad to take those. And I'm sure Helen will be more than happy to help you find out a way to get them to there. You can make a difference. You, each one of you, can make a difference. In the story that was read, the New Testament setting of the woman anointing Jesus, we have this amazing picture of how she comes and she, she kneels before Jesus and she, she wets his feet with her tears. She dries them with her hair. She anoints him with oil. And there comes this part in the story when, when he's talking to Simon, but he's actually looking at her. And he never takes his gaze off her. And while Simon in his head is saying, does he know what type of woman she is? He has judged her by her lifestyle, by how she looks. And yet Jesus keeps his gaze on her because he's not looking at the outward picture. He's looking at her heart. And as you and I come here this morning and worship together, he's not looking at how we look on the outside. He knows I'm more of a jeans and t-shirt person and more than a skirt drives me bonkers, but I'll do it. 
He's not looking to see how well we're dressed or how well we look or how much we smile here today. He's looking at our hearts. He wants to know, do you know me? Do you know me as your Lord and your Savior? Do you love me? When Jesus looked at that woman, he knew this. She loved him. She loved him. And he sends her away with no condemnation. But he sends her away transformed because of the love that he has for her. That same love that he talks about there is the same love that he has for each one here this morning. Whether you're male or female, old or young, that same God has his gaze on you. And you can say the same as Hagar. You are the God who sees me. So whether outwardly today you look as if everything's great, it's Mother's Day, everything's happy, everything's fine, or internally you're broken and you're hurting and you're in real pain and nobody else here has seen it. God has. He sees it and he knows it. And his desire is that he would be your Lord and your saviour and the one who would bring healing to your broken heart. His desire is that for those of us who do know him, that we would walk deeper with him each and every day. He says he goes before us, he comes behind us, and he walks alongside us. That's some God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you do see each one of us today, that, that there are none of us that are missed by you, but you're not worried about, Lord, how we look outwardly. It's our hearts. And Lord, my, my heart's desire, you know, Lord, my passion is that everyone here would know you as Lord and Savior. That those who are here today who are broken within would know your healing touch. Would know, Lord, that you see them, that they're not forgotten. So in the power of your spirit, Lord, would you come on a mighty way on each life here, whether it's the men or whether it's the women. But touch, touch them, Lord, and transform them. That they will be men and women who will love you with all of their heart, all of their mind, all of their strength, all of their soul. And they would walk with you from this day forward into all eternity. Father, bless this church. We pray for his minister. We thank you for him, Lord, for his love of you and his walk with you. And Father, for everything that he's been through over these past weeks. Father, will you minister to him? Will you build him up? Will you strengthen him and his wife? And Lord, let them just lavish them with your love, Lord, today. And that them as a congregation as well, Lord that as people pass by this place, they'll look at it, Lord, and they'll see they love Jesus. There's something different about that place. They love the Lord. And they'll want to come and find out what's different. Because these people are different. They love you and they walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close by singing the hymn 543, Jesus, all for Jesus. Let's stand together as we worship God.
Father, we thank you for your abundant goodness to us. Lord, receive from us the offerings that we place in these plates, but also the offerings of our hearts, and use them for your glory now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Just before the benediction, um, uh, sorry, I just want to say, Eleanor, you were God's choice today, although she was second choice on my form, and uh, we're still friends. And Kim, you have been God's choice too, and on behalf of the committee, we want to thank all the work you've done behind the scenes, and not tell you many numerous emails that Kim has guided us in this year, and we've been transformed by your leadership and by the program that we have been transformed by God in. And to thank all who've taken part today, the AV team, as Eleanor has alluded to. Uh, there's so many people who've been involved in this service. Uh, also to remind you that immediately after this service, um, there's a vision outreach meeting. You call into the choir room, you will see all the aspects. We have some of the aspects that you have in Wellington, uh, uh, Eleanor and some different ones and if you want to be involved in the prayer ministry the outreach ministry going out to do uh, to, to door to door or to do uh, other opportunities that's going to arise from our organizations you are all needed in it and you just can come in look at the programs that are already happening and if you feel that you want to sign at one of those and um, I also want to mention next week, uh, um, the Reverend Gray is lovely. He's with us today. He's taken a little time out, but he's with us in the service. And next week is the Reverend Kenny Hanna, isn't that? So that'll be lovely. Come next week. We're going to be hearing about agriculture next week. We love the food in our table. So we'll also want to hear about the chaplaincy that the Reverend Kenny Hanna is doing throughout our province. So we're going to say the benediction together. It's on the screen and you can say it one to the other. It is a blessing or you can say it quietly to yourself. So we'll say the words together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And Eleanor, you'll be staying for tea and coffee. I know you have to rush back to, uh, for, on account of this day, but you'll see Eleanor over tea and coffee afterwards.